I call Chris Farr for five minutes. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Um, it's a privilege to take a uh, call on this uh, debate on the Prime Minister's statement, and I think it's the first time I've uh, spoken with you in the Chair, so uh, Happy New Year to you. Um, Mr Speaker, it's always um, dangerous to, to quote oneself, um, but recent events have led me to look at some of the first words I uttered uh, during my maiden speech in this House. Um, quote one, Mr Speaker, is potentially a no-brainer cliché, but nonetheless carries weight. Um, and that was, I said, that I know that education is a game-changer. Quote two, Mr Speaker, was much more forward-looking. Uh, and I said, we want our children to have the education and opportunities to succeed in jobs we haven't even dreamt of yet. Uh, so that's why I'm excited about 2016 and 2017, Mr Speaker, because I know that, that side of the House have said they're excited, but on this side of the House, we've actually got something to be excited about. Because a Labor government that takes over government next year will put a stake in the ground to make sure our young people are ready for work in the 21st century with the right skills and training without the fear of being saddled with debt. <coughs> Because our Working Futures policy announced a fortnight ago by Andrew Little will ensure that all Kiwis will have the chance of living the Kiwi dream, to support their families, to live in their own home in a safe community, and I think that's something that most Kiwis want. Education is that game changer, and I think that every New Zealander and, every, and our country needs to ensure that we tackle the challenges uh, that the rest of the world also faces with us with the changing nature of work. And from our end, it's pretty simple. Our policy is three years, three years free post-school education, whether it be university, polytech, industry training, or an apprenticeship, because unfortunately in the future, those without skills will be left behind. And the nature of work is changing rapidly, and our education system must keep up, keep up with it if we want to seize the opportunities for the future. I believe this is also exciting in my electorate of mana, where I want to see people from the colleges of Porirua and Kapiti uh, move on to uh, Fitere Polytech to do the industry training, to do the apprenticeship model, um, modules, the bachelor's courses, all doing that locally, supporting our local Polytech and supporting our local economy. Free tertiary education will allow families who have seen tertiary study as too expensive or didn't want to be burdened with debt to change the course of their lives for the better. And it will give them higher skills, to have higher incomes, and seek out loftier opportunities. And I think that's something that most our families want for themselves. Mr Speaker, I am biased. So please don't just take my word for it. Uh, because I put this policy on Facebook, and I'd like to quote one from one local, Kylie Welch, who said the following on my Facebook site. My daughter is about to start three years at Massey University in Palmy, and I hope to help her pay for a lot of it. I don't like the idea of, of her starting her adult life in debt, but wouldn't it be a wonderful world to have, an to have her education paid for during those first three years? Kylie finished off with a pretty simple statement, I'm keen. Now, imagine if we could do that for Kylie and her daughter. Her daughter would study for three years for free, and that money that Kylie is, would, was going to invest in her daughter's education would go into the local economy, would go into paying off her mortgage, and I don't see a downside for that at all. But what about this changing nature of work that we've been speaking about, Mr Speaker? It's a reality that we have to address. Um, I think it's the New Zealand uh, Institute for Economic Research says that uh, in the future, 46% of the jobs that exist, exist now will be gone because of automation. And it's not just those manual jobs, Mr Speaker, it's the likes of accountants who are all, also worried about the future of their work. It's a challenge that we know that we have to challenge and it's a, it's a challenge that that side of the government completely ignores. And it laughs about it, and it makes jibes and jokes on this side of the House, but we know, Mr Speaker, it's something that has to be addressed. If it was such a joke, why did Davos, the World Economic Forum, have one of its key points on its agenda about the, the fourth industrial revolution? Is it such a joke now? that we've got the foresight to look forward 10, 15 years and say half of the jobs that exist now may not exist. And if you want to retrain, our government will help you do that so you can have con continue to, to live that Kiwi dream, so you can support your families. It's not a joke to us, it's real. But every time that, that side of the House uh, discusses this issue, they think it's a big joke. It's not a joke, it's reality, and it's going to hit us hard soon if we don't start doing something about it. So that's why our Working Futures policy is, is built for the future, and that's why this side of the House has something to be excited about as we head into the next election.